everybody. Welcome to the Fired Up with CJ show. Today we have Selene Coloni uh, Williams, and we're talking about her book, The Mother Mantra, The Ancient Shamanic Yoga of Non-Duality. So welcome. Hi, I'm CJ. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, you're talking about something that is um, something that I have, have, have just attended a workshop on the importance of tuning in to divine feminine energy. So it was um, not a surprise that I'm like, oh, what am I interviewing this week? Oh, the mother mantra. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, but I wanted to, I mean, it sounds on the surface very similar, but I wanted to start off with the main subject of there, the mother mantra, and wanted to ask you what is the mother mantra? Oh, the mother mantra is a very ancient tradition. It is the core teachings of shamanic yoga and shamanic yoga is um, an animistic uh, primordial primitive form of yoga. Its main feature is ecstasy mm -hmm. and um, non-duality. And so the mother mantra is um, a tradition of uh, um, spiritual exercises uh, and uh, healing practices uh, which uh, are um, done in a state of ecstasy, in an amplified state of consciousness. Ecstasy is um, an intensified state of awareness, of clarity of sight. It is... Um, a non-dual state of consciousness in which um, all the opposites uh, meet, meet together. And um, in other words, is, um, is love, you see, because uh, the, the, um, the through uh, formula, the real formula of non-duality is three in one because uh, always we have two opposites but giving one to the other creates a new manifestation and so there are always three elements in a non-dual state of consciousness two lovers and their manifestation and this is the trinity which is the natural condition, but we can find everything in nature, a tree, a butterfly, a wolf, an eagle, and this is the state that we can enter through the practices of uh, Madha Mantra and Shamanic Yoga. Okay. All right. So let me actually break this down because uh, I think you've given us um, so many concepts that I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with. Um, so I want to actually break down so mother mantra you started off as saying is uh, ancient shamanic yoga. So let's first break to that down. I'm not even sure what ancient shamanic yoga means. So can you tell us a little bit about what ancient shamanic yoga is so that I understand the context in which mother M mantra is part of? Yes, yes, of course. As I said, shamanic yoga is a primordial ancestral form of yoga and um, its main feature is ecstasy. So we can say that we are doing a shamanic yoga we, when we entering a state of ecstasy. And uh, in the shamanic yoga, um, entering the state of ecstasy is also known as entering uh, um, the psychic forest, or as I love to say, um, the marginal forest. Beware, imaginal, not imaginary, because imagination is um, a psychological enactment of the of the eye. But uh, imaginal is a place, is the no man's land, is the earth in between, where all the opposites meet. Okay, wait, so let's break it down, because I, I think you're, you're, you're getting into a very deep subject matter that I'm, I, probably most of my listeners, including myself, I'm not familiar with. So I don't want to lose a bunch of people because I want them to understand your material. So you first of all said it's an ancestral form 
Mother Mantra is part of uh, ancient shamanic yoga. Ancient shamanic yoga is an ancestral form of yoga that focuses on ecstasy. Um, and you said then the psychic force and magical force, I have no idea how those are connected. I, I didn't understand what you're saying. Can you help connect those two pieces for me? Yes, uh, um, uh, I was talking about the difference between uh, imaginal and uh, imaginary. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, in, um, in a shamanic yoga vision, um, imaginal is a place mm -hmm. uh, when we can go by crossing the great threshold. The great threshold is the threshold which divides um, visible from invisible, human and divine, life and death. And um, when we enter a state of ecstasy, uh, which is an amplified state of consciousness, we are um, aware, we are conscious, simultaneously in one side and in another of the great threshold. So we can reunite visible and invisible. We can perceive simultaneously in the visible and the, in the invisible side of the great threshold. You see, this is the state of ecstasy. It is when you can be fully aware. You can be aware not only of what is uh, manifested to your, uh, um, to your ordinary senses, but also you can be aware of what is uh, uh, hidden. To, to your ordinary senses, you see, because we do not only have two eyes looking outwards, we also have two eyes looking inwards. And uh, when you enter an amplified state of consciousness, um, you, can, <laughs> you can be fully aware because you can use all your senses. Um, uh, your inner sensing senses and your uh, outward looking senses and um, when you are in this state you can uh, you can be fully creative and uh, also you can be inspired because you are fully open and um, in, in shamanic yoga and uh, in the Mother Mantra tradition, we enter the state of ecstasy through um, many different uh, techniques. For example, uh, uh, breath control or um, devotion, uh, even uh, asanas, uh, yoga postures, uh, and through active imagination. Um, we, we say that uh, all the shamanic yoga uh, practices uh, have two sides, the mother side and the sun side. The, the sun side is the energetic and uh, bodily experience. The mother side is the visionary experience. And both of these, these experiences have to be present simultaneously when we do a shamanic yoga. Okay, see. all right. So why don't we actually move into um, sharing. Um, we had a question from Tara who was asking how we can tune into all of these senses. And I was wondering if you could maybe give us an experience so that you can give us a sense of how we would enter into this imaginal realm where there's three, there's the opposites and one that combine into creating the sense of clarity and ecstasy. So um, maybe you can step us through some experiences. Yes, yes. Uh, in, I can, for instance, guide you sure. into 
<laughs> okay, good. Yes, yeah, so let's go yeah. ahead and do it. I think it's 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 um, it, it's uh, I think with these esoteric teachings, from my perspective, it's it may be easier for me to understand what you're saying if I experience it. So maybe let's actually go guide, uh, guide us into some experiences. Of course, if you can close your eyes now and open a little bit your mouth and breathe through your mouth and I can guide you. Okay. So um, please breathe gently through your mouth. Mouth uh, is an unusual opening and um, breathe slightly more uh, uh, deeply than you normally would do through your mouth. Keep your eyes closed and um, imagine Imagine that you can cross now the great threshold. This can be done in two directions, from life to death and from life to the time before birth. Now, keep on breathing through your mouth and imagine to go back, to go back to the time before your birth. Here, at the beginning of everything, only love exists. And this is your house, this is your permanent condition. But because you carry from your previous life a certain resistance to love in form of attachments and fears, the winds of your karma, which is love, manifest for you an image of a new life. It is, from, it is through this image, through this life, that you can melt your attachments and fears. First of all, the winds of your karma at the beginning of the time shape for you an image of the mother. Your mother is the carrier of a, of a profoundly emotionally emotional and profound and sometimes even dramatic myth or tale. Every one of us by living enacts a myth, a tale, and every one of us finds their freedom, their deliverance, their resolution when they see the myth that they are enacting in lives. And so your mother is the carrier of a profound emotional, sometimes dramatic myth through which you can create your own myth, your own tale, through which you can melt your attachments and fears. And this is why the image of your mother is the best image for you. You can't have a better, a better mother than the one you had. And then the winds of your karma shape for you an image of the father. Even your father is the carrier of a profound 
emotional myth through which you can create your own myth, your own tale, through which you can melt your attachments and fears. And this is why the image of the father that you have in this life is absolutely perfect for you. It's the best, best image you can have. And then the winds of your karma create an image of a life, brother and sister, partners, son, daughter, friends, even enemies, and all the events of your life, which are images, dream, projections, apparitions. Everything is an apparition. We say in the shamanic yoga, yoga tr tradition, everything is a great image. And in this great image, everything happens now, now, everything happens right now. But our mind can't grasp all the image of the life simultaneously. It filters it bit by bit, creating the sensation of time and of objectivity of things. If you can cross the great threshold you can see that everything is simultaneous. And everything is just an image, a dream, a projection. And this image is love because it's an image shaped by the winds of karma in order to help you to melt your attachments and fears and find your true nature which is love, because at the end, only love exists. And your life, it's just a calling to love. All your resistances to love appear to you in form of events because your soul speaks through images not through words and creates the image of your life. In the Mother Mantra tradition, we know a very powerful mantra, which is known as the mantra for the images pacification. Pacify the images is a shamanic art. It's a very important shamanic art. What does this mean? It means evoke images, for instance, the image of, of mother or father, and enter all the emotions 
of the relationship with these images, with love, forgiveness, thankfulness. Let's do this now. The mantra of images pacification is O Ra Tum. O Ra Tum. 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 O, o Ra Tum. O so now, tum. yes, now repeat this mantra mentally, mentally. So I'm saying to myself oh. s s s silently, O oh, Ra Tum, O oh, Ra Tum, right? Yes, silently, silently, exactly. O oh, Ra Tum. O oh, is you, Ra is your mother, and Tum is your relationship. Now, please, try to evoke one of the most striking images of your relationship, one of the most striking images of your relationship with your mother. And two is this emotion, is the emotion of this relationship. O is you, Ra is your mother, and two is one of the most striking emotion of your relationship. O ra tu, o ra tu. By repeating this mantra, enter this emotion, enter this relationship with gratitude, with forgiveness and love. This is a way to pacify the image, to pacify the emotion, to pacify the relationship. O ra tum, o ra tum, o ra tum, o ra tum. One more time, O Ra Tum. Now we can do the same with the image of the father. O is you, Ra is your father, and Tun is one of the most striking emotion of your relationship. Evoke this emotion now. The one, the one that comes first. And enter this emotion with gratefulness, love, forgiveness. and repeat the mantra silently. Oh, Ra, Tu. 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 And you can do the same with all the images of your life. For instance, you can do the same with the image of a planet. We can evoke the image of the planet now, enter the relationship with this image. O is you, Ra is the planet, and Tu is the most striking emotion of your relationship. 
enter with enter with emotion with gratefulness joy enthusiasm and love o ra tu 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 keep your eyes closed and please consider that all the events of your life are images events are entities spirits gods and goddesses as the ancient knew all the ancient events were gods and goddesses for psychoanalysts they are archetypes for shamans are spirits the art of events pacification is a very important shamanic art which can um, completely change our past in order to help us to create a better future for ourselves and for the planet you see we say that as long as you don't know how to die and then be born again you will remain an unhappy wanderer in a dark earth so crossing the great threshold in in both in in two directions from life to death or from life to the time before birth is a very great shamanic art which is called shamanic journey and uh, in um, in the mother mantra tradition we know many mantras or a tune is one is the mantra of image pacification we know another mantra for instance which is the mantra of a mystical marriage mystical marriage the mystical marriage is the perfect condition of non duality when you realize that you are distinct but not separate from every image you can encounter in your life you are distinct but not separate and so and also you realize that beyond every images you can encounter in your life there is always always the same image which is love so when you realize that love is the true substance of every image you can encounter or you can imagine or manifest in your life you enter this special this wonderful state which is known as mystical marriage in the mother mantra tradition this is a creative condition because uh, love is a creative condition and um, and also we have our mantras in the, in the mother mantra tradition for instance the mantra of abundance <laughs> because um, 
through 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 mother mantra practices we can reach through the the true the true abundance which is uh, not only material <laughs> abundance but it it is also abundance of love of relationships of creativity of joy um, and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm wondering if you can step us through a meditation for the um, marital mantra. We have about um, a little bit less than 20 minutes. Is there a meditation that you can do in maybe 15 minutes to kind of give us a, a, a taste of what you mean by the marital m mother or mantra? Yes. A, a little test. Um. I can even uh, tell you the mantra of a mystical marriage, which is uh, Aya Samas. Aya Samas, okay. Exactly. You can find this mantra in the book. You see, our invisible companion. Our guide spirit, uh, of course, uh, is uh, no male, no female, but we can imagine it in a female or male shape because of the relationship that we have with our guide spirit, uh, our invisible companion, is um, an erotic and thus a creative relationship. And so, if you want, um, uh, if you like to imagine your guide spirit as a male, you repeat Aya Samas. If you, Samas, yes. If you prefer to imagine your um, guide spirit as female, you repeat Aya Samaya. So choose your mantra and repeat it silently. So it's Aya, you give me the choice. Yeah, the choices again. Aya Samaya. Aya Samas. Oh, Aya so Samas. If you imagine your guide spirit as male. Um, or Aya Samaya. Aya Samaya. If you imagine it as female, okay? Of course, it is androgynous, but um, but in in the shamanic yoga tradition, is a suggest to um, imagine your guide spirit in male or female shapes because. Uh, this help us uh, to feel it uh, more, to feel it uh, closer, to see, and to to grow in this relationship, which is uh, and a vital, a creative, an erotic, erotic in the sense of creative relationship. So repeat the mantra silently. Aya Samas or Aya Samaya. Enter the relationship with your divine companion. And please realize that your divine companion is everywhere and everyone you can meet in your life is just a mask that your divine companion uses to approach you to touch you, to feel you, even 
every place in your life is a way in which your divine companion appears to you every tree every flower every animal every person every drop of rain is your divine companion if you repeat this mantra sometimes daily you can become aware of that at a very deep level at a bodily level because this mantra has the power of awaken in your body consciousness the memory of your of your wonderful union with the divine and when you are in this union you can melt your fears all your fears and when you go beyond your fears you can achieve all your goals so entering the mystical marriage entering the mystical union with the divine is the way to achieve all your objectives This is this is the most important achievement of your life. The state of non-duality. When you are in the mystical marriage, when you are in a deep union with the invisible, with the divine and you create from this union none from the union with your mind with what is already known but when you create in the union with divine you manifest always something new and you can go beyond every divisions discriminations you can reach inclusiveness the state of inclusiveness which is a wonderful state beyond mental judgment beyond any violence in a wide state of peace and joy so i want to leave you two mantras one is oratun please remember it and try to practice it. Oratun is the mantra of images pacification. You can pacify all your memories, all your images through this mantra, all your emotions. And then the mystical marriage mantra, which is Ayasamas 
if you like to see your invisible lover as male, or a yasamaya if you prefer to see your invisible lover as female. Repeat this two mantra every time, every time you can, every time you remember to do it. God, that's wonderful. So that actually really helps me get an experiential sense of it. So um, just as a review, so when I'm having um, an emotional experience or kind of a charged experience and I want to kind of pacify to be more peaceful about something, um, I would go through, and I think what I, what I had, I, I now understand what you were saying before. So there's a, you step me through a realm of going back to my past, thinking about my mother and my father and changing the relationship of it to realize that there is a, a, a lineage, a, a, a quality of it where they brought to me exactly what I needed um, for my karma, for me to grow and to learn, that they were perfect parents in many ways for me to learn what I needed to learn. And when you brought up the, um, f sadly for me, when there was a mother or father, I would bring up like a hard emotion that I had for my mother or for my father. And with the O Ra Tum, I was bringing myself, them, and a sense of forgiveness. And I can see if I kept on repeating it as I, I crossed the threshold of kind of a different perspective, not me as a kid and my mom yelling at me, but me in this kind of imaginal threshold where there's this one plus one equals three kind of scenario. There's the two of us and then there is something that we created together and to bring a sense of forgiveness. I, I get it. I think I get that that when you're talking about a mantra, it's this shamanic in that it's like going back to the past, going to an imaginal realm. Um, so I, I think, did I get that right in terms of the first meditation and when to use it? Yes, it's perfect. <laughs> Everything you said. Yes, you perfectly understood. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. All right, so that was the first one as I understand it. And I can see if you kept on throughout your whole day, whether it's your boss or your mother that you still have unresolved issues there, there are mental projections that I have that I represent that have been created by my life experience events in my life. And so I take my little CJ world in the mental movie that I've put on and I project it out into the world. And so instead of saying, like, it's my mom, it's all your fault, I can say, oh, actually, when the two of us are together, we create this three, this other entity that is the union of the two of us. And if I can just say this was all for both of our goods, for the goal of the one, the one, and the three, and the third entity that was created by our union, if I just repeat the oratum, it's like there's this kind of, I, I no longer have to hold on to those projections. I can kind of let them dissipate. Um, I, I think that's what I got from that experience. Um, it's okay. And then the second one, which is this, um, oh yeah, Sama, it's, um, I just took a class on uh, attachment parenting and this is the psychological, I know you're a psychologist, the, the aspect of feeling safe, feeling um, valued, feeling attuned to. And so I can see how the Oya Sama or Samoya, like it's like you're just like every single moment of presence. I'm actually having an erotic dance with the divine and I'm creating all of these things versus like the world is happening to me and it's like a disaster. <laughs> Why is this happening? Versus a different kind of mentality of, Ah, this is like an erotic dance with the divine and every single moment is unfolding to a new creative possibility. But I have to feel the love and the safety and the protection of this like greater divine that's all around me. Instead of seeing like 
oh, someone almost hit me in the car. Ah, you know, ah, you know. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. If we can go to a different mindset of like, oh, yes, I'm a, you know, how, how is this part of a divine dance that I may not understand at the moment, but it is happening at this moment. Is that what the, I mean, how do you use the Oyasama? Is that the right way of thinking about it? Yes, exactly, exactly. Because uh, for the individuals, it's very difficult to um, recognize the divine in every event of life. Sometimes events are very hard, you see. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's not easy to recognize to recognize uh, the face of the divine in every single event of our life. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, we have to use uh, uh, one of the most important power um, that we have, which is faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to trust. We, you see, love and faith are two sides of the same of a um, of the same power. You see, um, and so we have to use both uh, of the side, love and faith. And even if if we are in front of a, a very hard event, we have to find within ourselves the courage to say ayasamas, ayasamaya, I recognize in you my invisible lover, I recognize in you the divine, because I have faith in you, I trust you, and in such a way the events start changing start changing because uh, faith and love are <laughs> uh, the most powerful uh, um, possibility that we have to change our reality. Mm. And mm. if we use it, for sure, we can change uh, everything. Everything we can change everything. Yeah, because if you look at everything as love and having faith, even though your little mind, your analytical, critical mind can't see it as love, which is your projection on all sorts of different things, but it is love. We just can't see it yeah. as such. All right, yeah. so um, we've been talking to Selene Colone, um, Calone Williams about her book the mother mantra. Um, and so how can folks, um, I know that you're from Europe. You're actually, you're in Switzerland. It's like, I don't know, some gun godly time, like 949 there. So thank you so much for being here at such a late hour from your side. Um, how can folks um, be part of your community? How can folks who enjoyed this experience find more about you? Through my website, for instance, um, stw.academy. Okay. Uh, or through my Facebook page. Uh, on my website, uh, there are a lot of videos, uh, free videos, uh, free webinars, uh, free articles. Uh, and uh, um, so... Um, and of course, this book. <laughs> Yes, in the book there are all the mantras <laughs> of the uh, shamanic yoga tradition and many practices uh, that can be done daily. Um, yes, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing um, your practices with me and thank you for being here so late at night. Thank you. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.